Would a Tesla Cybertruck be a good combat vehicle? A number of people wrote me about this. There was this picture of Chechen President Ramzan Kadyrov standing in the bed of a Tesla Cybertruck claiming that it would be a good vehicle to send to Ukraine. Now, a couple of things. Uh, as you know, I have like four jobs, one of which is the Director of Integration for the Aeromed Lab. Uh, this is a company that uses AI-powered drones to deliver whole blood to wounded soldiers on the battlefield. We have an upcoming test in New Mexico uh, like two weeks from now, and I have to coordinate everything from ordering pig's blood to portable toilets uh, to getting lunches delivered. So I haven't been producing as much content as usual. I'm under a lot of freaking deadlines right now. Uh, so sorry about that, but I can knock this Cybertruck thing out. Now, regarding this Cybertruck, most of the messages that I got asked if it was true that Elon Musk give a Cybertruck to Chechen President Ramzan Kadyrov. And I... I don't think so. There is a general ban against companies in the U.S. or the EU from transferring certain technologies to Russia, and Chechnya is a republic in Russia, a semi-autonomous republic. Uh, the Cybertruck would fall under those sanctions. So why did Ramzan Kadyrov say, we received a Tesla Cybertruck from the esteemed Elon Musk, I was pleased to test this new technology, and personally witnessed why it is rightfully called the Cyber Beast. So, uh, so brace yourself for a shock. Politicians lie. <laughs> you know, um, this particular Cybertruck was probably sold on the secondary market, uh, and they either later sold it or gifted it to uh, Ramzan Kadyrov. So, you know, there is another part of this statement by Ramzan Kadyrov where he says, the Cybertruck will soon be sent to the SVO, which is what the, uh, the Russians call the, the Ukrainian battlefield. Uh, the SVO zone, where it will be in demand under the appropriate conditions, I am confident that the beast will greatly benefit our soldiers. So now here's a question. Um, you know, would the Cybertruck be a good military vehicle, a good tactical vehicle, especially in Ukraine on the side of Russia or Chechnya? I don't think so, and I don't think so for a number of reasons. First off, I own a Tesla, although I drive a Model 3. I love it. It's the best car I've ever owned, although I wish it would fix the trim problems. And apparently the Cybertruck has some trim problems as well. Like you, you can't slam the doors and, you know, in combat, you're going to be slamming some doors. Now that's kind of the first issue. And, and Teslas aren't designed to be soldier friendly, at least not stock Teslas that you might buy from the dealer. Uh, the seats aren't really leather. They're, they're PVC or, or vinyl. And while vinyl is hard to damage, soldiers wear a lot of equipment. You know, we're talking about canteens, pistol belts, knives. Uh, you have a lot of stuff that you're wearing that's going to poke or cut into those seats. And as you sit down over time, you're going to wear a hole in that seat where your equipment is rubbing against that seat because the same canteen is rubbing in the same place. And, and then the vinyl will tear. Also note that vinyl melts at uh, 212 degrees or 100 degrees Celsius. So if your vehicle gets hit and you are on fire, the last thing that you need is to melt into your seat. That's going to make it a lot harder to escape. Uh, there is a reason why Army JLTV seats have cloth seats. Also note that the Cybertruck has a touchscreen that's not really possible to operate with gloves on. Many soldiers wear gloves either because it's cold or for personal protection. So that's another disadvantage. Uh, you, you need like push button controls in military vehicles tactile feel you know with your with your fingers to, to manipulate uh, because like a touch screen is just going to be really really hard to use unless it's kind of touch screen that can identify pressure like the uh, FBCB2s or the Blue Force trackers touch screen uh, and that kind of leads me to uh, seaburn or operations in a chemical biological radiological and nuclear environment typically when you're in a chemical protective suit you're wearing gloves and you can't operate that Tesla's touchscreen with gloves on if you're in a chemical environment. So it would be much more difficult to operate a Cybertruck in a Seaburn environment. Um, that being said, military vehicles are generally sprayed with cark paint or chemical agent resistant coating. This makes a vehicle more resistant to the absorption of chemicals. Uh, Cybertrucks are stainless steel. I'm not sure how many or how resistant stainless steel is to chemical agents. I would imagine it is pretty resistant because I, I would certainly imagine that chemicals are created in stainless steel uh, vats, right? So they're probably used to manufacture those agents in the first place. So stainless steel is probably pretty resistant to chemicals. 
Um, but at some point, you're also going to have to paint this truck because stainless steel is going to stick out like a sore thumb. And also, regarding nuclear warfare, uh, if someone detonates a nuclear weapon, would the electromagnetic pulse of that nuclear weapon take out the electronics of the Cybertruck? My guess is that this Cybertruck is not hardened against electromagnetic pulse. And the average truck truck that just has glow plugs, you're, you might not have to worry so much about electromagnetic pulse with uh, vehicles that have tried and true diesel technology. So next, uh, I want to talk about the electrical system in the Cybertruck. Um, you know, I know that there is a police vehicle company that outfits Teslas as patrol vehicles. So there must be some spare power to run ancillary systems like radios or battle management computers. But I would imagine that would suck the life of your battery down. Now, it probably isn't a problem in police vehicles. Uh, you know, you take a police vehicle out for an 8-hour shift or a 10-hour shift or a 12-hour shift, and then you charge it for 12 hours when you're done. But on the battlefield, you might be out for days at a time. And with no way to charge and no efficient way of getting electricity to the front lines without a generator, you're really running the risk of getting stuck. And if you have fuel to run a generator, why not just use that fuel to power a vehicle with a diesel engine? Why are you putting, why are you taking diesel to a generator and then using the generator to create electricity to then put into a Cybertruck? You're adding another step. And anytime you add a step in logistics, that makes your logistics more inefficient. Now, that being said, the Cybertruck probably wouldn't be a bad vehicle for things like maybe convoy security, maybe airfield or base security, or maybe just a general police vehicle where you have access to the ability to charge. But using it out in the field as a tactical vehicle on missions would be a big logistical burden. So the next issue is detection and masking. Now, I don't have any of the videos of the Cybertruck on infrared, but there is a video of the Model S on infrared using a FLIR camera, forward-looking infrared sensor. And you can assume that things like tires heating up on something like the Model S would be pretty universal to any vehicle. So you'd see tires heating up on the Cybertruck, ditto for when you charge. Uh, I would also imagine the stainless steel body of the Cybertruck would heat up a lot as well. And that would uh, expose your position on thermals. But again, this could probably be mitigated with paint. There are a couple more issues that would be harder to resolve. First off, the American military has vehicles that have a very complicated light switch or master light switch. And the reason for this is that you never want to accidentally turn the lights on. You know, you bump something, the lights come on. So with this special light switch, I can even turn off the brake lights so they won't come on even if I hit the brakes. And you would need some kind of software kill switch or like a software reprogramming or even like a hardware kill switch that would physically prevent the Tesla's headlights and brake lights from illuminating when you don't want them to illuminate. Uh, you can imagine it's dark, you're on some tactical mission, you get in the truck and the lights come on when you hit the brake light or the, the headlights come on because the sensor detects that it's raining, right? That would be bad in the tactical environment. And you know, if light and heat are really just two parts of the same spectrum. So masking and camouflage isn't just about hiding things from the naked eye, you also have to worry about radio emissions. If a vehicle like a Tesla is periodically calling home, either over a satellite network or over a cellular network, a lot of electronic warfare experts can find that vehicle. Using a radio often enough can pinpoint your location. Now imagine constantly streaming your location, constantly calling home. So in some cases, this is a feature. Uh, the FBCB2 and its replacements uh, they use tracking data to let commanders know where all their vehicles are. But these radios either go directly up to the satellite or they're encrypted and or frequency hop. So they're going up and down that digital spectrum, making it a lot harder to find exactly where you are. Modern digital military grade radios are a lot harder to pinpoint. With something like the Cybertruck, whose radio wasn't designed with the military in mind, the radio meaning the radio that calls home on the cellular network, um, I guess you are doing some frequency hopping on the cellular network, but not to the extent that the military would do it. Uh, you're just constantly blurting out your location. It's going to be a lot easier to detect. And again, not a problem if you're a police vehicle or a security vehicle, but definitely a problem if you're a tactical vehicle. Now, I'm sure people are going to watch this and go, well, wait a minute, the Cybertruck is also bulletproof. I mean, maybe for civilian arms. 
Uh, I think the steel in the Cybertruck is 1.8 millimeters thick. And that might be good enough for a pistol caliber small arms like a Tommy gun or a 9 millimeter, but that's not stopping a rifle or a machine gun round. And you, know, some, you might call something bulletproof, all you need is a bigger bullet, right? So nothing is stopping a shape charge warhead of a missile or a drone. Uh, but that, that's the case for any vehicle. That's why you see things like cage armor uh, the, to detonate those warheads before they actually hit your armor. So are there any advantages? I mean, the vehicle might be much quieter than a standard diesel engine. So it might be a good vehicle to conduct raids, or like drop off snipers at a hide site and then leave again. Although, you know, you could do that in the golf cart as well and have a lot less signature, uh, especially in all of the spectrums, you know, the radio spectrum and the, the infrared spectrum. Um, quiet running is great, <clears throat> but not at the expense of, uh, you know, cramming all of this uh, signature onto the thermal and radio spectrums. So I don't think that the Cybertruck would be a good tactical vehicle. Uh, you just have to modify it too much and just better options already exist. I think this is nothing more than a publicity stunt. And hey, if you love the Intel Life, grab one of my Intel Life t-shirts from Bunker Branding. It all goes to support the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Oh wow, daddy cigarettes. If I smoke these, I'll be cool. Hey kid, what are you doing? Think tank. You know kids, smoking isn't cool, but t-shirts, stickers, and hoodies from Bunker Branding sure are. Wow! Alcoholics moving cargo! Awesome! Intel Life, Aerosol, Live Laugh Launch for Destroyer, Trident, High Mars, and Patriot. Think outside the bomb, Drone Sweet Drone, Department of the Boat People, Landmines, and even the Tow Missile. It would behoove you to grab one today. I better take these. Don't worry, I'll destroy them by burning. And remember, bunker branding is cool. Now I know. And knowing is half the battle. Bunker branding!